Hello, my name is Floyd Maxwell, and this is a, a video on um, jigsaw puzzles. Uh, something that's become a bit of a hobby and a passion of mine, I suppose. And uh, I guess trying to show you some of the puzzles uh, in my collection that are up on the walls here, um, and and talk a little bit about puzzles and from you know a variety of perspectives. I think the uh, this one here, by the way, is five thousand pieces. This thing is it's larger than it might look, and uh, this was a tough one because pieces could fit into many different possible spots. <laughs> and like a lot of this sort of tree material here is all kind of every piece looks the same. Um, some of these are easy. This one was 300 pieces and easy, but just sort of a classic theme. This is a beautiful Kenyan puzzle. Ajuka is the company that made this puzzle, and uh, obviously very pretty. 1500 pieces, pretty good size. A little challenging, but just a nice puzzle. Uh, some of the, one of the panoramics I've got, uh, Carlsbad Caverns, famous caverns that you can go inside. Apologize for the quality of the photo. One of my clients was a uh, Swiss that I cared for, and uh, so I got this, you know, sort of for that person, and I ended up just putting it on the wall here. I thought I'd put it on the wall here just as a memory of that person, and, you know, they were interesting and just sort of reminds me of them. They're, they were always very passionately Swiss. Uh, just a classic puzzle, panoramic. We've got it nestled up up a wall near the ceiling. It fits in there. Panoramics fit in good in a house because you can put them above doorways. Panoramic meaning uh, much wider than it is tall. <coughs> Painting of a moose. If you've ever seen a moose in person, it's quite a quite a sight. They are large and majestic. This is a classic uh, scene. I think it's in Alaska where there's a river and the the Grizzly bears are just, you know, they're like jackrabbits. There's tons of them, and they, they just grab these, you know, 10 and 20 pound salmon right out of the river and just have a feast. Um, this is uh, Red Square in Moscow, famous. Um, you know, having a fireworks display. I'll just step through these. Uh, this is a river in uh, moved, Lake Havasu, is it? And London Bridge was moved there? I forget. I think that's the story behind this puzzle. This was a 2,000 piece uh, puzzle on uh, the famous Neuenstein Castle or whatever it is in Europe. This is in winter. This one was also kind of tough, but part of the reason, part of what made it tough was that I did it when I was starting my puzzling. And that's one of the things about puzzles is as you do them more, you get better at it. Yes, you develop some strategies, but also just your brain expands and, and you just simply get better at it. When I first started, I had to use um, this is Multnomah Falls in Oregon, kind of beautiful in, in winter time with it frozen. This was a very difficult puzzle uh, because it, all the pieces sort of look the same, and, and also they're not um, geometrically similar pieces. They're very ra randomly different pieces. So you pick up a piece that has a little spot of black and mostly white, and where does it go? Could go anywhere, right? <laughs> Luckily, on puzzles like this, you know, you can start on the, the stop sign, maybe do the red, and you can work on this shadow. It's a different tone. and You know, you can sort of follow some of these tones, and that gives you sort of a, a skeleton, a frame for completing the puzzle. One of the more ordinary panoramics that I have, there's just a lack of contrast in this photo. You know, the thing with a puzzle is get a, get a good quality picture. This is for kids, this puzzle, and this one. This was a solar system kind of with a lot of humor in it, but a lot of facts too. This was a, th I think, 3,000 piece uh, puzzle by Schmidt. And uh, it's a sort of a stylized art artist's impression of New York kind of thing with some funny little uh, deliberate uh, typos in some of the names on it. Kind of challenging, mainly because of its size. It needed some, a, a big board to work on it. A kid's puzzle. This Escher puzzle was particularly difficult because the border, um, you know, it doesn't look that much. The border is like a half an inch, but the border is all roughly, the sides are sort of the same on a given side, and then the pieces could fit in more than one spot. And so it ended up, and this is often the case, you know, when you first start puzzling, you think, I'll just do the border first. But after a while, you realize if you run into any snag on the border, or in some cases, like in a shaped puzzle, the border is not really complete, it's deliberately not complete. And do the border later. And in this case, we did the center of the puzzle, and then we worked out to the edge. And then it was easier to resolve border conflicts because you had done, you had more other notches to match up. This is a spectacular dragon. It doesn't even all fit in this photo. 
Um, this is a shaped puzzle, uh, great for the kids, and uh, you can get them at Goodwill. For some reason, this particular puzzle, you can get at Goodwill cheaper than almost any puzzle. It's just amazing. I, we've got, I've got uh, three of these all together. I've only assembled one, but I've got three of them. One day I'll put the others together. Really awesome. This was uh, one I bought to sort of fill a niche and to sort of decorate a room, part of decorating a room. This is five feet wide, doesn't look it. It's really quite beautiful, spectacular Ravensburg puzzle. More for the kids. This one also was sort of to decorate a room. 2,000 piece Ravensburg, world's tallest buildings. Kind of awesome. Some sunset-y ones, uh, nothing special. This is a little bigger than average, 1,500 piece. and. You know, a little bit more elaborate, but you know, once after a while, you can sort of tell which puzzles are going to be hard and which ones are going to be easy. And so this one, I would just say, was of average difficulty. Cute little one. Love those doggies. Nothing special as a puzzle, but just you know, a cute theme. Um, some of, the, excuse me, some of the uh, puzzles decorating are just you know, you can tell they're small puzzles, and you know, they're just sort of part of a theme for a given area of, of the house. Another animal themed one, uh, classic uh, Tower Bridge in London. Uh, some more themed ones. I'll just skip through a lot of these. Um, they don't sort of bring anything special to mind in terms of their difficulty. Most of these were small, so they weren't really that hard. That's kind of spectacular, the color. Um, I, I like these kind of, you know, when you have a log cabin kind of thing in a, in a puzzle. There's just something about it that just seems very relaxing and peaceful. This particular artist has done a number, I've got a number of them, and uh, they're kind of interesting when the more you study them. Like here the background is birch trees, and so they sort of blend, and they blend into the snow. And um, Here's another one. This is called, I think, a man in a tree or something like that. There's a guy lighting a fire inside a giant redwood. It's a little hard to see. This one was kind of difficult. Um, I, I don't know if it would be difficult today, but at the time I did it, it was difficult. This one is cool on two levels. These these horses are sort of camouflaged into the background, and very interesting. Let's take right here. There are larger pieces, and then there are small pieces that fit into larger pieces, and so it's like a double assembly of the puzzle. Unique puzzle. This artist here, exceptional. There's 16 panels. One, two, three, four, and then uh, maybe I'm wrong on the 16, but um, maybe 12. I think that's right. It's just this photo's taken on an angle. One, two, three, four down there. Yep. And the closer you look at it, the more you realize that, like this eye, this supposed eye, like this is all, you know, tall grass here that's being used to decorate this eye. And every time you look at a feature that you think of as human, it's actually the person has used natural things like grass and animals and various things to simulate a human. Absolutely ingenious and beautiful puzzle. There's a wolf buried in that picture. This one was hard because I got it used and the box was all faded. So the photo was faded compared to the puzzle. Well, this is basically a brown puzzle. Brown's one of the tough colors. And it's just hard to see contrast in brown pieces. Well, the whole thing was like that. And then the <laughs> picture on the box was basically the, everything was the wrong color. Tough. This one was tough. Um, ordinary, except for the theme. We have, I have sort of a wall. It's like an Asian wall, you could say. And this is one of the pictures on it. There's another one. This one I purchased new. I just thought it was really cool. Um, shaped puzzle. And just really quite pretty. Uh, Crater Lake in Oregon. Another panoramic. Uh, I sort of take what I can get in terms of what puzzles are available. Um, this is a Hawaiian volcano. It's part of it's chopped off because of how big I'm making this video. But... Quite a beautiful puzzle, a little dark, so somewhat disappointing. You know, it's it's a fine balance. Color uh, intensity is a fine balance. Again, Columbia River Gorge. This is really beautiful. I've been to this this little observatory here. It's really a spectacular view there. It's kind of a nice drive around that area too. Highway 30. If you're in this area, anywhere near this area, you should check it out. That little highway, especially, very memorable. Sequoia National Park, I believe it's in California, fantastic sequoia here. Uh, sequoia is one of these awesome trees, it's just sort of, it's got a personality, you know, and has a uniqueness to it. And what makes a sequoia unique is that, to me, is that uh, it, its trunk is enormous in comparison to the upper parts. What I mean is it, it tapers very rapidly, more like a pyramid than a cylinder. It just tapers very rapidly. 
And of course they live extremely long. So I guess at least two unique points. Some kind of an arch somewhere. Uh, panoramic, another panoramic, more panoramics. This is the glass on top of the Louvre uh, Museum in France. You know, it's kind of pathetic when all you can do is take a picture of a glass thing outside a museum. You know, they're so worried about preserving the art inside that basically no one gets to see it. That's kind of pathetic. Vegas panoramic. This this puzzle here was very beautiful. Just look at the color in that. You know, it seems very difficult, but it's not that bad. Like when you pick up some purpley pieces, well, this is, you know, one of the areas it could be. And maybe it's in here, pinky purple. You know, this puzzle wasn't that hard to assemble, and it really looks stunning when it was when it was done. Some of these are not memorable. I'll just skip through them. This is the first puzzle I put up, in quotes. It's never been nailed. It's still not nailed. And, of course, it's missing a whole bunch of pieces, which I found very disappointing, but others have commented that they like it. And, you know, it's sort of interesting that Mount Rushmore itself was never finished. And so it's kind of appropriate that it, you know, this monument that was never finished and was really a spectacular effort, you know, the puzzle for it is missing more pieces than almost all the other puzzles combined. This is the solar system, like a sky chart, night chart. Uh, I have sort of a space page. So here's uh, here's the actual New York Times front page on the day they walked on the moon as a puzzle. It turned out, it turned out the border of this was also difficult. difficult. This is uh, Buffalo Games. Buffalo Games makes good puzzles, the American company, and they make really good puzzles. And this one's 2,000 pieces, Washington Crossing, the Delaware. By my interpretation, this person and this person are women. And I, you know, I don't know much about this event, but it, it just surprised me. I wasn't expecting it. Anyway, it looks kind of grand up on the wall. I believe this is uh, Himalaya's Everest. I think this big boy right here is Everest, the mother goddess of all mountains or whatever the... Tibetans call it, you know, thanks to my father, uh, my background, I've always had an interest in Tibet, or, well, I guess Tibet, but Him the Himalayas and Everest especially. This is called Slot Canyon. It, the photo doesn't do it a tenth of the justice it deserves. It's a great photo. These sculpted, these rocks, the sandstone gets sculpted by flash floods of water. And so you get these little pockets of light shining through all this sort of eroded rock. And really quite beautiful. I mean, the kind of place that if you walk through, you'd never forget it. A plain vertical of Empire State Building. This one's kind of nice. Another Buffalo Games puzzle. Uh, just these. I'm sure these birds didn't end up on a branch together, but it's a painting, and, and it's well done. And I've always liked birds. I think it's well done. Speaking of birds, the eagles. And a sh this is a shaped puzzle, so it's a little can be a little harder. Uh, I think a fair bit harder for a couple of reasons. One is it ends up being larger than it would normally be for the number of pieces. So let's say a thousand piece puzzle is typically 20 inches by 27 inches. This would be, you know, bigger in both dimensions by maybe up to a foot. Because if you notice, like all this white space here means it can be bigger somewhere else. So you need bigger, you know, boards to work on it than normal. And, uh, yeah, yeah, patience. Like in some cases you have a thick border. Okay, it's obvious this is border. In some cases you have thin border. In some cases you might, and depending on the puzzle, have no border. And and you're like, where does this piece? You know, where's the border? Where's the edge? And again, don't don't sweat the edges, especially on shaped puzzles. This is in the, on the ceiling in the bathroom, uh, and this is I think just part of it's cropped. But it's San Francisco, this is the uh, insurance company tower, the sort of uniquely pointed tower. And it's a night shot of um, of San Francisco, uh, Yosemite National Park. You know, I don't know if this is Half Dome or one of those one of the famous granite faces of of the park that the rock climbers climb. This this panoramic vertical panoramic of the Eiffel Tower it glows in the dark. Kind of cool. Got it in the bathroom. You know, you go into the bathroom, you flick the light on, turn the light off when you're leaving, and there it is. It's glowing in the dark. It's kind of cool. This didn't turn out well, this photo. Mount Hood says over here. This is kind of nice, where I've got it displayed with the light. It, it ends up being kind of nice. It does it justice. Mount Hood is a surprisingly tall mountain, I think like 11,000 feet. And it there's very little around it, so you can see it from miles away in all directions. And it, it, it you know, it does mountains proud. Uh, Oregon Coast photo, kind of a nice photo. Uh, this is K2. This is the second biggest mountain in the world. We try harder. You know, 
or number two, we try harder. Um, and this, you know, K2 is a tough mountain. You know, people die climbing K2. Sure, they died climbing Everest too, but I mean, not as many climb K2, and so they're a lot more serious. And yet, basically, one of the problems with K2 is when you're climbing it, there's a point where, for a large period of time, you're on the side of the mountain. It's all the same slope. You're basically on a giant slope. You even have to sleep on the slope. And the point is that any kind of a slide comes down, and well, it keeps going, doesn't it? It just goes down the whole slope. So, you know, Everest is much more crevicey, and so, you know, you have a period when you're going through crevasses where, you know, through sort of boulder fields kind of thing, boulder ice boulder fields in, on Everest where, you know, you want to be careful of that little moment in time, and you've got to have, you know, ladders and ropes and everything else. But once you're through there, you're done, and I think they call it the Kumbu Icefall. But on K2, you are much more at risk for much more of the time. So this is this is a a mountain climber's mountain, without a doubt, very challenging. Uh, this was uh, Masterpieces is a company that makes puzzles, and one of their claims to fame is that their pieces are larger than average. So you get more bang for the buck. You get a larger puzzle for the same number of pieces. Uh, again, with the Asian theme, some wrestlers. Uh, I guess a, a sort of a sumo wrestlers uh, Japanese theme. What made this a tiny bit difficult was the white. Again, when I did it at the time, I was sort of more of a beginner, but the white at the bottom was all just white pieces. It was a little bit intimidating. This beautiful little puzzle is only a little 500 piece, or nothing special, but the photo is really nice and the tones are really nice and it sort of groans on you. Yosemite Falls, vertical falls. I have this one in the bathroom out and I happen to you know look at it a lot. And and it, you know, it stands up. It stands up. This one, it's obviously sort of unedited background, is uh, called the Allegiance, the Eagles. I guess a bunch of these are going to be unedited backgrounds right now. Brace yourself. All right, this one is, uh, as you can see, there's George Washington down below crossing the Delaware. And this is a, a new one, a pyramid one that I bought. Spent, you know, quite a buck on it, but it's just so beautiful. Panoramic and love it. Similarly, um, this one's called Stingray, and, uh, well, you can see, it's beautiful. Same company, He, H-E-Y-E, I think is the company, something like that. It's an unusual company, named European, very high quality, very high quality. If you like their puzzles, don't hesitate to get one, because they're just such quality, and they, they're like a Ravensburger quality. They're really nice. This is an old one I assembled, you know, years ago, just a, you know, grizzly bear, and in fall, but now it has a place on the wall, and that's why it's sort of later in the theme here uh, in the set. Uh, I finally put it up on the wall. Uh, Arizona Highways puts out a magazine, and then they also, you can get some puzzles from Arizona Highways. And this is the Saguaro cacti in the Saguaro Desert, the only place in the world where you can get saguaros, these giant, awesome cacti that can weigh up to 10 tons to 20,000 pounds that can easily crush a car if they fall on it. There's just all kinds of unique and interesting things about these cacti. They're just... And, they, and when you're in Arizona, there ain't much to look at. So cacti, well, you better enjoy them. <laughs> it's going to be one of the main things you, you're looking at. One of these beautiful... This is a Buffalo Games. Uh, just beautiful. You know, the art of this, the tones. It's really rich and beautiful. Classic men on a on a girder, uh, you know, the New, New York City, uh, sort of apparently a bit of a stage photo, but really happened. They really were on that girder. They really were, you know, taking a break or whatever, and kind of awesome. Another classic, uh, the checker cab, the the yellow cabs. These, but these are checker cabs. Checkers, the the car company, the cab company. Uh, you only generally see them as taxi cabs, but these things are just tanks. And uh, they last, you know, a million miles type thing. Uh, a beautiful sort of tropical scene. And then a few more Asian ones to go on the Asian wall. Machu Picchu. I've, I've slotted this in with the Asian influence because of, I guess you could say it's Asian slash uh, other religions or other philosophies of life. And, and they really think there was, you know, spiritual significance behind Machu Picchu. It was sort of a... A worship site or a special site, an elder's site kind of thing. Leonardo da Vinci, a late addition to my uh, space wall. 
I'm not sure why I put them on the space wall, but I guess science slash space wall, maybe. This was a really small puzzle, kind of interesting shapes. They're all kind of like a lizard. If you look, you can see there's a lizard here. Um, uh, it's very small, but yeah, you know, who doesn't like the shuttle blasting off kind of thing? <clears throat> Man on the moon saluting the flag. Yeah, but that never happened. The shuttle, this is a shaped puzzle. A thousand piece Ravensburger, nothing but quality. Uh, kind of interesting at the detail of it, just a great puzzle. And this is Tuscany in France. Um, a new edition, bought it new. The last three or four you've seen it bought new, but um, you know, which is much more of an investment than getting them used to goodwill. But you guarantee you get all the pieces, and you get some that you just won't see otherwise. Some real beautiful ones that people, if they buy them, they hold on to them. So anyway, this one was kind of it wasn't that particularly hard to make because you know if you're really sort of studying this, you can see there are different areas. You can sort the pieces by different area, and uh, makes it a little easier to assemble. And then uh, one of the uh, visitors here is a is a small person and a small girl, and so I put up a couple just you know for this person. And those are they. And I think we're at the end. And if so, we're going to go back to a photo of my youth. I, I bought a a poster, which was this picture, and uh, when I was you know in my teens or early twenties. And uh, it, this is really and truly a stunning photo which you can still buy as a poster so I bought it recently and framed it and this was the I think I skipped this puzzle this is really the first one I took a photo of but I wanted to save it for the end you know the classic art all the, these are all Pink Floyd album covers as you know Pink Floyders will know um, Dark Side of the Moon you know Wish You Were Here is one of these the wall I think is that one Animals and these are I think two earlier ones or it could be later I don't know um, and then, you know, another thousand piecer and quite beautiful. So, um, the cool thing with puzzles is that you can think what you want when you're doing them. This this is not to be underestimated. You know, the, the way control happens in this society is they want us to not think. They go out of their way nonstop to get you to not think. So, when you work on a puzzle, you can think. In fact, it's hard not to. In other words, you know, you're sitting at a table working on a puzzle. Your mind doesn't have to be going, what do I do now? After a while, it's just all automatic. And so your mind is free. And so you can have a project. You can, you know, you can have something on your mind. You can work it through while you're doing a puzzle. And this is not, the value of this is not to be underestimated. Um, there are other ways that a puzzle is kind of cool. Um, you know, decorate your home. They're not expensive. You can choose which ones you get. You can choose where you put them. They're like a good, thick, solid poster. They have their own backing, so you don't need to frame it if you don't want. I just fire them up on the wall with a couple of nails and uh, a bunch of nails. And we'll worry about the nail holes later. But, um, you know, puzzles, not expensive. And they develop your mind. And another thing, too, is you can work on a puzzle a long period of time. Let's say you're sick. You're stuck at home for a few days. Um, what are you gonna do? It can it can be miserable. Why? Because you feel you know your body feels terrible, heavy, painful, and you need something to just something to distract you. And uh, a puzzle can be a very good distraction. As I say, it can be used sort of positively, where you you know you deliberately want to think about something while doing it, and it can be used you know negatively or passively, where it gets you through a low time. So this is Floyd Maxwell, JustThinkIt.com, talking about jigsaw puzzles and showing you some of the artwork up on my, the walls of my home. Hope you've enjoyed it. Good luck with your life. Take care.